Given a true course of 238 degrees, variation 3 degrees west, indicated airspeed of 160 knots, ambient temperature minus 15 degrees Celsius, pressure altitude 8,500 feet, and a forecast wind of 160 degrees at 25 knots, under these conditions, the magnetic heading and ground speed would be approximately a. 224 degrees and 171 knots b. 233 degrees and 171 knots or c. 241 degrees and 178 knots Brace yourself, the E6B is coming back out. The first thing we have to do is calculate the true airspeed using this side of the flight computer. Ideally, we'd be given a calibrated airspeed to work with here, but we've been given an indicated airspeed, so we'll have to make do with that. You'll see here we are given two windows to work with. One says for altitude computations, and the other for true airspeed and density altitude computations. We'll use the true airspeed and density altitude window. We are given an ambient temperature of minus 15 degrees Celsius. On the scale here, you'll see that minus 15 is located approximately here. The pressure altitude is 8,500 feet. That's on the white on black scale here. You'll see this is 5,000 feet, and we go up 1,000 feet at a time. So 8,500 feet is approximately here. We need to rotate the wheel in order to line this up. That looks about right. Now what we take is the calibrated airspeed, read that from the inside scale, and read the true airspeed from the outside scale. We've only got indicator to work with here. Blame the FAA for that one. There's usually only one or two knots in it anyway. So you'll see the 160 on the inside scale matches up with just under 178 on the outside scale. So we'll call that 177 knots. That's true airspeed. The next thing we have to do is flip over that flight computer and put the wind in the backside. Oh. Sorry. I prefer to start with 100 knots under the grommet, so that's where I'm going to slide it. The next thing to do is to set the wind direction at the top, which is 160 in this case. The wind speed is 25 knots. We're going to mark that up from the grommet, and that will be our pencil line. Now the wind forecast direction, when written down like this, is usually in true. So we're going to stick in true, even though the flight computer asks for magnetic. Now we're going to rotate the wheel so that the true track is at the top. And you'll see because we're working both in true, we can convert to magnetic later. Screw the instructions. Now we slide the flight computer so that the pencil mark is on the true airspeed. We can now read the course correction required, which is 8 degrees to the left. We need to therefore minus 8 degrees from the track that we've got at the top, which is 230 then. The ground speed can be read from the grommet which is just over 170 knots, so we'll call that 171 knots. So now we've got an answer of 230 degrees and 171 knots. Unfortunately that wasn't one of the options, and that's because we need to convert to magnetic. So we have a variation of 3 degrees west. When transferring from true to magnetic, we need to add west variation. So we need to add 3 onto the 230 to give us 233 degrees. The final answer is therefore 233 and 171 knots. So the answer to the question given a true course of 238 degrees, a variation of 3 degrees west, indicated airspeed of 160 knots, ambient temperature of minus 15, pressure altitude of 8,500 feet, and a forecast wind of 160 degrees at 25 knots, under these conditions the magnetic heading and ground speed would be approximately b. 233 degrees and 171 knots. I should probably cut out that backside joke before I upload it.